all gone. So last year I made a really good seaweed and wild garlic butter. It was packed full of flavour and really good on cooked oysters. So let's make some more and head to the beach. So here we found dulse. It's the first seaweed we're going to use. You can see it's like a reddish brown colour. It's a really deep meaty flavour and we should cut it off the rocks rather than pick it off the rock. That way the roots still is attached to it and it can regrow. And once we've got lots of this, we'll dry it out and then just crush it up into the butter. This is lava, this is our second seaweed. It's a bit like a plate of bin liner. It's quite unappetizing when it's dried out like this. But when you see it in the water down here, it's a lot nicer looking. It's quite tough, but a lot of flavor. So you boil it up for a good few hours, make it a bit soft. This is wild garlic. It's a really good beginner plant to forage. Easy to identify, delicious, and easy to pick. So it grows around March, April is the best time to pick it. And be aware, there's one poisonous plant that looks similar. That's called Lily of the Valley. How tell the two apart? Lily of the Valley, they branch from the same stem. So the leaves here, all individual until it gets to the bottom. So that's the first way. The second way, really important when foraging, use your nose. Get some leaves, crush them up to get the oils out. And there's this pungent garlic chive aroma. You can't miss it. If you can't smell garlic strongly, you've got the wrong plant. It's really strong. Sometimes you're driving along and you can smell it before you can even see it in some areas. So use your nose, just get up there. Oh, it's oh, so good. The next thing is don't pick the roots. Picking roots of wild plants is illegal unless you've got the landlord's permission, but it also stops it from growing the next year. The best thing to do is with a knife, just take a few leaves from each plant. Just a couple here, a couple there, and just keep moving around like that. Higher banks covered with three-cornered leek. It's a really underused herb, and it's got some really punchy flavour. If you look at the side of it, once you cut it, it's got these three distinct corners to it and a really strong garlic smell. So here we've got all our ingredients laid out. Lava, so it's been simmered for about six hours just to get rid of that kind of toughness. You can go a little bit less, but you do need to cook it for a bit of time. The dulse, it's been drying out for overnight in the oven. You can just leave it out in the sunshine if it's good enough weather, but it hasn't been today. So I'm gonna crumble this up and it's really savoury, try a bit of it. It's crunchy, it's meaty, it's great. Got three corner leeks and a wild garlic. It's been washed, I'm gonna finely chop them. Really important, have a sharp knife, otherwise you just smush them and bruise them and it's just a mess. So sharp knife, really important when chopping herbs or any vegetables like this. I'm just gonna roughly put a knife through it. So you can use the mixer if you can find your attachment, but if you can't find the attachment, you can do it in a bowl like I'm doing. Really key, get your butter up to room temperature. If it's too cold, it's just going to mush around, it's not going to work. If it's too warm, it'll be a bit sludgy and go a bit rancid and just it's not going to be very nice. So butter, I'm using unsalted. I don't really believe in unsalted, but the seaweed's really salty. So unsalted's kind of key here. So I put it in there. And then add it else, but not the other ingredients yet. So the butter's been softened a bit now and just a bit more pliable. It was a little bit too hard to be honest, but it's fine now. And the next day, just putting in the lava. We put the more easily bruised stuff in right at the end when the butter's a bit more softer and more whipped. And now this is really soft, it's really well mixed. All the seaweeds are in. 
and do a slightly more fragile stuff, which is three quarter leap. Not going to put all of it in, and then some of the rounds in. All crispy bread, man. I'm going to make like a sausage and roll it up. Twist the ends. And so just keep it in the fridge. Slices, any dish you want. I personally keep it in the freezer. It lasts for a good six months or so in the freezer like that. It's really good on scallops, oysters, or even a steak. And it's really, really easy. And this makes quite a few of those. Good presents. And as I said, cling film or greaseproof paper. So thanks for watching and making it to the end of the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. I know it's boring here for everyone, but it's a huge help. I thought I'd recommend a couple of foraging books in case you're interested in trying it out. I have hundreds of these next door, but these are just a few good beginner ones. The first one is Food for Free. It's about three or four quid. It's been going for decades. It's the go-to Bible for foraging and it fits in your back pocket. It's really good. Buy a few of these, keep one in your car, one in your bag. Don't go anywhere without it. It's that good. This one's a bit controversial. It's quite new, I think. I bought it a few weeks ago myself. It doesn't have very detailed descriptions. It doesn't have hundreds of black and white drawings of the side of a leaf, but it is really visually appealing. It's just got these stunning images in it. And I think it's a really good way of cutting your teeth and just kind of getting inspired to go pick things. But um, it does lack some technical detail, which these other books have, which I'll put some links underneath for. Just be sensible. If you don't know what you're eating, don't eat it. Uh, ask for help and just cross-reference things in multiple books. When I first started, I used two or three books at the same time. I'd bring something back and just check in every book to make sure that they all kind of agreed with each other. Lots of them have different pictures and different ways they describe stuff. So it's quite handy to do that. Um, so if you like the video, as I said, please subscribe. Um, click the Amazon links below if you want to buy these books. As I said, they are affiliate links, but they don't cost you any more money to click them. And enjoy, and hopefully get into some foraging.